I'm in your circle. You got it. <laughs> Look at this. So, so the vision board for me, and I appreciate that, is like the 60% to invest is what I want to do. But the step to do that is is being in the right circle. Mm -hmm. Well, if you didn't win $100 million, you could put on your vision board names and faces of the right people to be around now. Mm. Right? Like, so you could say, I want you to be in my circle. And then the vision board for me is defining that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started um, and explain why this session is so important. Um, feel free to uh, turn your cameras on if you want to. Um, oh, wait, I think so. Brooklyn and Nola, uh, if you want to, you can come up. You don't have to share your your screen or anything, it just gives you the opportunity to, to speak. So the power of a vision board um, is something that we have done and for, for years now. Um, and it really, really works, right? So Yudo and I started House Studios in DC a while ago together. Um, slash, you know, what's funny. I didn't know that you came in with Ophelia. Yeah, yeah. I was I was Sorry, managing man. her cousin. I was managing her cousin. And then he was he stopped doing music. He's like, yeah, you got to meet Ophelia. She's the dopest writer. She was. She's pen is yep. crazy. Amazing. Her pen's crazy, but she was, you know. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. 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 But but so um we saw a lot of success, uh, you know, vision boards for the equipment we wanted. We got every piece of equipment um, for people we wanted to come to the studio and people we wanted to collaborate with. And they came to the studio and they collaborated. Uh, people we wanted to just meet and things we wanted to just do and awards we wanted to win. And I can honestly say that there is nothing that was put on our vision board that we didn't accomplish. And at first, I didn't think that it was directly connected until we had the engineers and the producers do a vision board at the studio. And shout out to Jake Vicious over at Vault Studios. Jake uh, did a vision board. And again, everything that he put on his vision board, he accomplished from winning a Grammy to producing for certain people, to becoming a governor of on the Grammy board, like all these things he did and he accomplished it. So the reason why this is so important because I myself have never done a vision board alone. It is something that I truly struggle with. You and I have always done vision boards together, but I've, and he's done his on his own, but it's something that I struggle with and have for years now. And I think a part of a vision board is also discovering who you're going to or who you want to be, right? That's what a, a vision board is gonna put you on that path. And I think I'm still trying to figure that out. And so this is gonna force me to actually do it. and. And yeah, because I think we'll all hold each other accountable. That's what a community is for. Um, so some of the strategies, and I am going to actually ask you to, to, to share uh, some of the strategies because I will honestly say I am still, still learning. Um, yeah, so. So for those of you who know me, I am a super manifester meaning like i literally live like everything you see was once just on a piece of paper or a magazine clipping or something in a in a notepad on my phone that i now have um i i, I really wasn't like into no actually i won't i'll show you guys this first i wasn't super into that like vision board and all that first but I'll show you like 
So one of the rules I have is you have to see your vision board daily. So in college and when I was younger, I used to have it on my wall. But now, because my wallpaper on my laptop is something I look at 365 days a year, my current vision board is on my desktop. My calculator's up. I can't see it. Oh, I do see it. Yeah. The Zoom stuff's in the way for me. But like, yeah, so this is my vision board, right? It, it's not that pretty to look at. I did it in Canva. Um, and each thing represents a different thing for me. I could walk you through what it is, but ultimately for me, I know what it is and I look at it every day. And what it does is subliminally creates a, when I'm getting lazy, when I'm getting on Instagram, when I'm doing shit I'm not supposed to be doing and, and, and need to focus, this is my daily reminder. But there are things like the 24 seven artist logo that's been on there for three years, that's now happening. Right, this was just a logo on my desktop three years ago. Now it's an actual functioning business. Um, like, I don't want to hang with Jay Z and these guys. For me, this just means like my friends, my peers, and I have the ability to enjoy life and like enjoy and, and support each other's successes. I get to do that now almost every day. Um, I mean, there are things like The Richest Man in Babylon. It's just a book that I love that changed how I look at things. So I put it on my vision board because reading that book however many years ago changed how I looked at the world. And it's just a reminder to me when I'm making decisions, like, are you still tapped into that? Um, and, and so like, regardless of what's on your vision board, it could be health, it could be wellness, it could be travel, it could be vanity things. It's, it's your world, your life. The one rule that I, I think has to happen is you have to see it every day. So the funny thing is I also have a version of this on my phone or I had a version of this on my phone. I, I took it down um, because I look at my phone every day too. So whether it's your bed, whether it's your bathroom mirror, um, whether it's the ceiling above your bed, put your vision board visibly somewhere you can see it every day. Uh, I wanted to share that with you guys just to, to show you like, A, it's, it's not that pretty. I did it in Canva um, and B, I, I look at it every day. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to show you guys a few techniques that are useful, hopefully helpful for how you approach the vision board. So one of the things that I think most people get caught up on when it comes to a vision board, uh, like Davina was saying earlier, is like where to start. And so I like to look at the idea of like, what if I won the lottery, right? And, and if you were on the webinar last night, you heard me say it. If you've had a one-on-one -on -one with me, you've heard me say that. Like, what does your lottery life look like? So let's write a crazy number down. What if I won $100 million, right? So I'm gonna write that down. I got $100 million, clear and free in the bank. After taxes? After taxes. So $100 million after taxes in the bank. Um what what do you do right so like you guys like tell me some things that you would do immediately if you got a hundred million dollars you can just call them out and i'll write it down i gotta take six percent of that and invest it somewhere 60 percent of it okay so six percent invest anybody else i'm buying property across the world and land property across the world anybody else mm -hmm gonna be setting my parents up for sure for the rest of their life so i love that one any anything else buy a new traveling interface. traveling what was the other one buy a new what buy a buying new. a new interface you gotta get that follow buy a new interface yep you can buy the interface company with this money but yeah i love <laughs> that <laughs> what else Y'all can talk vanity, like don't. This ain't got to be holistic. It can be like I'd like to buy my fam. I'd like to buy my family members things they need, like house or or not just need. I should say want like houses and cars and like uh, nieces and nephews tuitions and stuff like that. This this, this is definitely going to be all over my vision board. But islands, I want to build islands and I want to buy islands. So one of the things on my vision board, it was a like some land 
is actually an island on the tip of that land that I want to buy. So it's hopefully you say that. Yeah, man. You know, there's so many reasons why. I'm not gonna lie, I was just thinking about that. I didn't even watch the movie, but I heard everyone talking about the um, Glass Onion movie, and I just looked at the little summary, and it was talking about the billionaire tech's private island, and I was like, I want to private island. You don't even need to be a billionaire, y'all. Have y'all yeah. really, I've done this research? So this is a whole other time. I'm not gonna do this to the call. Yeah. You don't even. Hold up, man. Oh. So I'll stop here because I know we could go forever. Um, but like, so this is the immediate, right? And so for me, the vision board is everything after this list. So that's the exercise I go through of like, I got a hundred million dollars and I'm gonna do all these things. Like nieces and nephews got college funds, family members got their houses and cars. My studio setup is crazy. I've got a crazy travel budget. My parents are set up for life. I'm, I've got my properties across the world. I've invested my 60%. So let's say it takes you a year to do everything on that list with $100 million and all the resources in the world and relationships on the world. A year after the $100 million, when there is, let's say, $40 million in your account, the interest from your investments is what you live off of, and you don't have to worry about your family, money, or anything for the rest of your life. What are you doing every day? What does your life look like? So I'll go down the list, right? Like, so you're investing 60%. What's driving your investment slash? What, what, what are you investing in and why? Because at this point, you've got more money than you can count. So are you investing in just like, are you trying to make more money for more money's sake? Or is there something more to it? Uh, this, I mean, $100 million, like I'm not a greedy person. You know what I mean? Like 60% 60, 60 of that being invested is I want to put that into people. I want to put that into tech. I want to put that into land. I also want to put that into educating people for free. Like what you're doing right here is amazing in music. But I want to talk to people about things that are even that are just beyond just music. Like we need to go back to how do we connect as people and we need to be educated. Like bots are becoming so much stronger and better. Like people aren't, right? They're not evolving at the same rate as AI is. So like we need to do something in order to help ourselves. You okay. know, and that's just about connecting. I love it. So now what is something that you would do to be better suited for that vision or that mission? What is something you could do for yourself that would make you better prepared to execute on that vision? Well, you do. You had that picture of like Jay Z and Kevin Hart. Well, I think I'm taller than Kevin Hart, but if I'm close to people like that, you know what I mean. If I'm close and I have a good ring, a good sphere of influence around me, I believe that that'll be the first step, right? So, like, it might not have to be Jay Z, but you do. You can be in my circle. I promise. You can. I'm in your circle. You got it. Look at this. <laughs> So, so the vision board for me, and I appreciate that is like the 60% to invest is what I want to do. But the step to do that is, is being in the right circle. Mm -hmm. Well, if you didn't win a hundred million dollars, you could put on your vision board names and faces of the right people to be around now. Mm. Right? Like, so you could say, I want you to be in my circle. And then the vision board for me is defining that. All right. So for you to be in my circle, I want to make sure we connect at least twice a month on a phone call and at least once a year in person. That's a vision board like view for me. The 60% to invest is the byproduct. But what I can do today for free is pick up the phone and make sure I connect with the right people. And once a year, I'm physically connected to, and we, we either having a dinner or we had a bar. Like you could do that now for not a hundred million dollars. Like you get it? So like that for me is how the vision board works. It's not the 60% to invest. That's the byproduct, but it's the, to be in the right circles. And this is what I mean by right circle. These are five or six or seven names that I'm going to put down. Some I already have access to, and some I maybe one or two degrees of separation from, but by the end of this year, I want to be able to like talk to these people regularly and have this be my circle of influence. And then now when I'm, making decisions on where I'm spending my time and who I'm talking to and who I'm reaching out to, I'm more mindful because I see that on my phone or I see it on my desktop every day to say, you know what, let me hit slash because he's he's in that circle of influence. I haven't talked to him in like three weeks. Yo, bro, you got you got some time next week. Let, let's hop on the call and just catch up. And you're purposefully doing it. The byproduct of you purposefully reaching out to that seven, six, five people is like the opportunities that come with that 
will put you in a position for some of the other stuff. But if you don't have that list of names and you don't have their faces or you don't have whatever it is, then it's just kind of like, all right, well, if I had it, I would have a circle of influence. But it's like, no, like list your circle of influence now. And you could go Jay-Z if you wanted to. But like you said, you don't have to go Jay-Z to have the right people in your life. There's probably seven people right now that you're one or two degrees separation from that are the right people for you. And so I'd, I'd have a space on my board where I'd either have their names or I would have their their faces or both. How many names do you recommend? Did you say 10, five, like five that were closer to being possible and five that were further from being? That's one. That's one. I didn't say that, but that is one strategy, right? Like it's it's what now that you've got the concept, it's not far fetched to say, man, I wish I was in the circle of Jay-Z or Warren Buffett or whoever it is. But well, before I get to those people, and you said there's probably four or five people in your immediate circle that you could probably just spend a little bit more time connected to that would change how you think and connect more dots and maybe you can invest in stuff with and support other people and educate people with now. Right. And so that's that's one. Right. So then property across the world, the exercise for this for me, Kevin, is like I legitimately would would take a certain amount of time every month to just look for the properties that I would buy. And I would I would go through the exercise and I would find the time and put on my calendar now, like maybe it's every third Sunday of the month, maybe for an hour. But I would say, you know what, let me go find the properties like where in the world. So list the countries and then within those countries, list the cities and then within those cities, list the neighborhoods and then like start looking at what it costs. Like you you were joking, but not joking slash about like, all right, I want to buy an island. But like, well, what does that even mean? Like, what, what does that take? All right, well, I just looked into it and you actually can buy it like this. Oh, man, there's actually islands that you could buy like that. Once you know the exact dollar amount and you know the exact process, it makes it that much more real. But if you're just saying, man, I want to buy an island one day and it's just like a word, then who's to say it ever is going to happen? But when I tell you like that island on my vision board, I know the GPS coordinates. I know who owns it now. I know exactly how much it's worth. I know more about that island and I know about more houses in Atlanta because when the time comes and I go to buy that island, I know exactly who to talk to. So so it's it's again like the vision board part for me is like it costs you nothing today to do the research to find the properties in the countries, in the towns, in the communities that you're like, all right, well, if I could have a property in these seven places, that'd be great. Will you get all seven? Maybe not. But I guarantee you if you at least have a list today, Within the next 10 years, you'll probably have a property in at least one of those places because you'll be aware. And maybe that changes where you vacation. Maybe it changes like who you're connecting with on social media. Maybe it changes uh, the money that you're saving and why you're saving it. Because now you're like, man, if I only had this much, I could put down a down payment on a house in this community. So those are the little things that I look at, right? Setting my parents up. I'll speak to this one personally. My whole goal was this. I was like, man, when I get on, I'm going to take care of my my people, my parents in particular. And I busted my ass, busted my ass, busted my ass, and finally got in a position to take care of, of my family. Um, and then, like, it felt like within a year of us finally getting to the point where I could, like, stand my family up, my mother, unfortunately, passes. So, like, I had this, like, vision of, success for me is like, I'm going to make sure like my mom doesn't have to work. My dad doesn't have to work. I'm going to do this. And then when she passed, it was like, well, now what? Like I didn't spend the time with her because I was justifying, like basically busting my ass so that I could come back and take care of her. And then by the time I could come take care of her, she, she passed away. So like, I'll say the setting up your parents, the funny thing is, and I'm a parent myself is Nobody's parents are waiting for them to take care of them, even Africans on the call. I can promise you as as much as they joke about it, your parents aren't waiting like they more worry about you taking care of yourself than anything else. But they'd rather get that phone call daily from you. That's taking care of them. Right. And then, like, if you could take them to dinner once a week or once a month now, if you could take them on a nice vacation once a year now, if, if you never paid off their home, if you never financially took care of them, but you did the small things, sent them flowers randomly, you know, take your dad to a game randomly. That's actually setting your parents up because as a parent, they feel like, damn, I've done like my, 
you want to get to a place where you're friends with your parents, especially as you get older and they get older, your, your relationship shifts. You go from like, they're the parent, you're the child to like, you almost become the parent at some stage, especially when they get really older. But like the, the best thing for them at that stage is, are you friends? Do you look forward to hanging out with each other? That's success in a parent's mind. So obviously if you financially can take care of your parents and you don't have to worry, that's great. But I can guarantee you, if you randomly called your parents, whoever has parents right now on this call and say, let's go to dinner next Thursday, just get dressed. Uh, you know, if you're, if you live near them, you can do that. Or, Hey, I can't do dinner with you in person, but I'll send you a zoom link. I'll cook here. You cook there. And let's just like eat together and like have a conversation. Like that's like winning the lottery to our parents. That's like, wait, you want to do what? You want to hang out with me? Like whether it's in person or on Zoom. And and that for me on a vision board just represents like maybe it's a calendar, maybe it's a date, maybe it's a consistency thing, but it's like, here's the reality of it. There's 52 weeks in a year. So everything I do, I count by 52s. How many more weeks do you have access to the people that you love? Is it 10 years, which is 520 weeks? Is it 20 years? Like how much more time do you have? So if you committed to do something once a week and some, you only have one more year of somebody, you only have 50 more times to do something with them. If they're here for four years, you only have 200 more times. Like it's not a lot more times we get to do these things. And we're not doing it weekly. We're doing it maybe monthly. We're doing it maybe quarterly. So the, the further apart we're doing these things, the fewer times we're going to do it. And that was something I had to learn from my mom passing where I was like, damn, like, Luckily for me, I spent a lot of time with her in that last year of her life, and we had no idea she was going to go. But like, I was like, man, had I just taken five more phone calls from her that year? Had I just like answered the phone a few more times when she called instead of being super busy, what would that have done for her? So that for me is more like setting your parents up financially is, is always a goal. And if you can do it, do it. But it's a stress we put on ourselves that our parents are not putting on us. And And what I never want anyone to go through is busting their ass to try to take care of their parents or set their parents up and miss the actual relationship with your parents that will be worth a thousand times more than if you were to call your parents right now and say, you never have to work a day in your life. Because here's what happens when you do that. They start calling you every day because they got nothing to do. Like, <laughs> I learned this the hard way. Like, once you're like, hey, you're good, I got you. Now they're just sitting at home thinking about you all day. So careful what you wish for. Like. That, I say that jokingly, but yeah, like dinner with your parents once a quarter, or if you live nearby once a month, a phone call a week or a phone call a day, that to me is more like realistic. And what? And maybe it's a picture of you and your parents when you're a kid. Maybe it's a picture where you're both smiling, but something on your vision board that represents that connection is what I would put on a vision board because setting my parents up is the byproduct of it. But the more you're connected to them, the more you'll understand what they need. And what they need a lot of times is like simple shit, like wait, mom, you don't have a toaster? Oh, let me Amazon send you this $40 toaster. Wait, like I just talked to you and like you still using your iPhone 6 and it doesn't work half the time? Yo, let me get you an iPhone 11 or whatever, 14, whatever's out now. Like that's for me setting your parents up are these micro things you can do along the way. And so hopefully you guys are seeing kind of like a, a trend that I'm trying to show you that the vision board part of it should almost always be the tangible things that take no money, ironically, but it's it's what do I do in service of the thing that I ultimately want? It's it's usually research, it's usually self development, and it's usually people connecting. It's almost all like, okay, you want to travel? Who doesn't want to travel? But who are you traveling with, and 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 where are you traveling to? Right? If you could travel, if you had a hundred million dollars in the bank, and you can go anywhere in the world but you had to go with yourself, you probably wouldn't love it, right? A couple times a year, sure. But after a while, it's gonna be like, yo, I don't wanna be in another hotel by myself walking around like a stranger. But like, if you could travel with your best friend once a year or like your, your, your best friend group once a year, even if that travel was like an hour away from your hometown, that's probably like a priceless trip. If you could travel with your siblings or your cousins once a year, that's probably a priceless trip. If you could travel with your parents once a year, that's probably a priceless trip. So again, if there's only 52 weeks in a year and you're not traveling all 52 weeks, how many weekends out the year can you travel and where would you go? But more importantly, who would you go with? And so start creating that list, that kind of bucket list of like, 
man, if we could do a beach trip with my cousins once a year, that would be great. It might cost you a couple hundred dollars to like collectively rent a beach house, drive there, put up for food and go have a ball. And what happens is as you level up in your life and you get closer to that hundred million number, the beach trip becoming like a Cabo St. Lucas trip, becoming like a Ghana trip, becoming like a top, you know, a, a Club Med five star, seven star resort trip. The the level up and trip, obviously we always appreciate it, but if you set the precedent of like we go on a trip no matter what now, then as your life levels up, where you go changes, but who you go with doesn't. And a lot of us miss that. A lot of us are like, man, like I can't, if I had a hundred million dollars, I'd travel. But my question is with whom and where? Because if you can go an hour away from your hometown and have a blast with your friends from high school or college now, plan that trip for like August of this year. If you can go like a cabin in the lake Airbnb style and like thug it out. And it may be like a, a crappy ass place. And like, that's part of the fun. Part of the journey is like, yo, like remember we went to that place and the AC didn't work and the this and that and that like, but those sometimes are the funnest trips. But when you have all the money in the world and you can stay in a five-star resort, resort and everybody's calling you Mr. or Mrs. and like, but you ain't got nobody to share it with. What, what you gonna take pictures on Instagram all day to show people the fun you you want them to think you're having? Or do you want the kind of trip where you're having so much fun you forget to take pictures? Cause it's like, yo, like we actually doing this. So those are the things. And then the interface one is easy for me. That's anything equipment or anything like tech or you know i literally had a picture of every piece of equipment that i have right now in a binder i had a binder and i i cut out from Sweetwater the interface the the preamp the compressor the microphone the, the speaker like every piece of equipment i've ever owned when when ssl creek came out with their matrix console and i heard about it i went to, to new york i went to ssl's office and i demoed it myself one of the first people to demo it and when i saw it i was like yo i need this I didn't have $60,000 for that board, but I was like, I, I need to figure out how to get this board. How it worked is I literally kept a picture in my office of that board on the wall. I had a meeting one day with Adam Levin, who owns Chuck Levin's in Wheaton, Maryland, and he came to the studio and saw the picture of the SSL on my wall. He's like, what do you want? Like, what, what are you doing with that? And I was like, man, that's my dream console, digital console. He was like, well, the funny thing is they sent us a demo unit and we haven't been able to sell it. I could sell it to you at a discount. It's open box, but no one's ever used it. I was like, Adam, I don't have $60,000. He's like, well, what do you have? I was like, bro, I can give you like 6,000 to make monthly payments. He's like, all right, give me the 6,000. I'll have the board dropped off tomorrow. Like it went from being a picture on my wall to I gave this dude 10% of what the board costs and it was in the studio the next day. And every month I went to Chuck Levin's and made a payment towards the board. No credit check, no, no credit cards, no agreement. It literally was a handshake deal that I would have never even thought to go to Adam and offer him that deal. He offered it to me. If I don't have that on my wall, he doesn't even know to think to ask me that. And I only had it on my wall because again, my vision board was wherever I was going to be. And my office wall was where I had my vision board. So it starts with always, again, like just having it visible and having it there will create the opportunities for you. I really believe that. And, and it's funny when I have all this stuff, just by searching it now, the algorithm works. Facebook Marketplace or like whatever random thing will pop up one day and you'll find someone who's hard pressed trying to pay rent. And they'll be like, man, I got this microphone. I'll sell it right now. And it might be the microphone of your dreams and they might sell it for 50% off. That's happened to me many times. And a month, someone's like desperate for money. And they're like, man, I got this thing. I need to get rid of it. I got to pay rent. I'm like, yo, I only have this much. Hey, come, come get it right now. So having that list, having that like complete list of like Mogami cables, like I literally had it down to like what it was plugged into, how it was plugged in, the, the, the patch bay, everything I wanted, I, I, I got from an equipment standpoint to the point where now, like, I don't even keep an equipment list anymore because I pretty much know like the second I want it, I, I can like, put it on a list and I'll get it within a year. Um, the family member needs and niece and nephews, this goes with the parents for me. So it's the same approach. Here, what it is for me, it's just a list of names, right? I feel like sometimes even as we grow up and, and become adults, we tend to lose track of the nieces, nephews, family. Like sometimes just seeing their names listed out somewhere gives it a power, right? Like, so like, who are the, people in your life that are like your 
these are the people I'm doing it for. These are the people I'm working to make proud. These are the people that when my life is better, I'm, I'm going to help them however I can. Sometimes just writing their names down then translates on that vision board to me of like, uh, this is my circle of people, my circle of influence that Slash is talking about, but this is my family, right? And on my vision board, you saw my family. You saw my wife, you saw my three kids. That's my why. That's like, if nothing else, I'm gonna make sure I'm connected to those people at, at the most intimate level at all times. I don't have all my cousins and aunts and my family too big for that anyways, but my why is like with all that I have going on in my life, I'm gonna make sure I'm stay connected to my kids and my, my wife. My vision board's adjusting because now as I get older and we start losing people, I realize there are people that I grew up with that I'm really close to, first cousins especially, that I don't stay connected to and I feel horrible about. So I know like as I work on my vision board this year, I'm gonna put some of those people's names in a circle and say like, even if it's once a month, these are the people that a month cannot pass that I don't speak to them. And I may not pay their tuitions, I may not buy them cars, I may not do some of that stuff, but I know how much it would mean to them and I know how much they mean to me to make sure I speak to them throughout the year. And if I could do once a week, I'll do once a week. My wife's great at that. She's She says she's not good at the vision board stuff, but she's good, she's great at connecting and staying connected to people. I'm horrible at it. Like I'm, I'll be like, damn, it's been two years. Like that's that's who I am. So like, that's one of the things for me where, again, if, if and I say if we could, we, we always could write a check. We find that out in times of like, when there's a funeral in our family, somehow we magically always come up with the money to pay for the funeral. When there's a family emergency and someone's in a hospital, somehow we always manage to come up with the money to take care of the hospital bill. We've never not done it. But we don't necessarily come up with the money to put the kid through school or we don't necessarily come up with the money to like help that person upgrade their kitchen. And that's one of the things I've started working on within our family groups is like showing them how community pots work like, hey, I know I could just like write a check and take care of everything. But as a family, wouldn't we feel better if like everybody just put up what they could? And so like we've done more of that recently in our family where like not just for like emergencies, but just sometimes just to like help somebody out. What if everybody put up $200? There's 20 of us on this chat. Yeah, That's like not a, a little bit of money. Like a susu. Like a susu, right? Like for those who aren't Liberian, a susu is a, a, a pot that everybody puts in and then one person gets it, except with a susu in Liberia. It almost never works out because you're supposed to alternate and rotate. Hey, my mom is vicious. Pot. My mom is vicious. She's been running that susu for years. She's... She she got it. The susu is it's it's crazy because it's it's everybody puts up an amount and every week or every month or every day somebody pulls from it and then it's basically like a a, a savings account, a, a group, a collective savings account that you contribute to and pull from. And when it's your turn to eat, as they call it, you end up with a lump sum of cash. And some of those susus get up there like thousands of thousands of dollars. But the second one person defaults, it starts to crumble. So you know, what we do with our families, I'll usually say whatever's the lowest amount that someone can come up with, everybody match that. That way nobody ever feels bad. If if it's like, yo, we want to do something, yo, everybody, what can you come up with? And if everybody sends us private text and the lowest number is twenty five dollars, I'll send a text to everyone in the family and say, everybody put up twenty five dollars. That way no one ever feels like, man, like everybody else put up two hundred now I could only put up twenty five. Because, again, what you're doing for these people, you may not be able to pay their full tuition. But if you could collect $2,000 from your family collectively and then say from the family, we're giving you this towards your tuition, it means just as much to that person going to college. And so you don't have to win the $100 million lottery to contribute to your niece and nephew's uh, tuition. You don't have to win the $100 million lottery to help somebody on the path to what they want and or need. And the, the power of family, especially for, for people who have large families, a lot of times we underestimate that. We underestimate the power of having 20 first cousins and 12 aunts and uncles and grandparents and parents and siblings. And by the time you add everybody on that list together, you're at like 40 something people. And at 40 something people, if everybody put up $100 a month, at the end of the year, you guys could do something pretty remarkable for anybody. You could do an internal scholarship program or anything. So again, sometimes it's not necessarily what can I do if I had $100 million and I would take care of these people here? But sometimes it's as simple as, all right, if I want to 
take care of your needs, wants, intuitions, then create a list of everyone and have a combo to find out what their needs and wants are because it makes it real. All right, so if you want to help family members with needs and wants, could you right now write down the needs and wants of all your family members? And if you can't, then the homework is start having conversations and say, hey, like if you won a lottery, like what, what would you do? And it's a question that people don't get asked a lot. So like when you ask your aunt that or your mom that or your niece that or your cousin that, sometimes people are taken aback, but eventually they'll say, well, you know, I always wanted to, and whatever they say after that, that's the thing you help them do. And I guarantee you don't need $100 million to help anybody do anything. Because a lot of times it's, it's very tangible things. But no one's ever asked them and no one's ever offered to help them. So, and you don't have to do everybody, right? Maybe you could say every year I'm going to pick one person and help them work towards their goal. And if I'm here for another 40 years, that's 40 times I'm going to help family members and friends with their needs and wants. It's an amazing life. And a lot of times it takes time, not money. You know, I always wanted to dot, dot, dot. Okay, cool. Now you can start going to do the research and figure out how to help them do that. And you may not be able to do all of it, but if you could at least give them a push in the right direction, sometimes that's all we need is that battery in our back to know, hey, maybe I can do this. Sometimes I just need someone to text me and say, hey, I was thinking about you. You should take this class or you should go do this thing. And I think it'll help you. All right, I remember you said you always wanted to learn how to fly. I looked it up and it's actually a $200 course to, to go take a free free flight. I went ahead and bought it for you, you know, just because it's it's two Thursdays from now, two Sundays from now. Let me know if you need a ride. Like a lot of times it's just that. And again, it'd be great if you could buy Maybachs for everybody or Range Rovers for everybody, but way before the Range Rover, because that's the, the, the bad part of starting there is it's really hard to top that. It's like my I had to learn this from my wife because I would go big first. Take steps, right? Like someone's going to appreciate step one at step one and step two at step two and step three at step three. They'll appreciate step 10 if that's the first one you give them. But if you start at step 10, it's really hard for them to appreciate step one. You can't start at 10 and come back down to one because then it's like, oh, you went from getting me private flights to like buy me a can of tuna. Like, bro, what are you doing? But sometimes buying a can of tuna first is the first step. So that's kind of my, and in buying islands, I already told you I'm about my island, but that's just research. That's like, it literally is like, yo, what island, where, what's the GPS coordinates, who owns it, who bought it, when's the last time they bought it, how much did they buy it for, how did they buy it, where's the deed, deed, right? Like, how do you land on the island? How do you get there? Like, it's all these little things that like- Food, food, food. transportation of food. Um, What's the weather like? Right? Yeah. Do they have tsunamis? Do they have storms? Are there best times of the year to be there? Yeah, weird taxation laws. All right. So that that's the uh the 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 fun part is like the more you research it, the more it becomes real. And even if you never buy the island, there's a joy almost in doing the research. You because it may be a conflict, right? Like, because a lot of our things in our vision boards are really conflict. Like, I want to travel a lot, but I want to be with my parents. It's like you can't do both all the time. And I want an island, but I always want to be with my friends. It's like, but you can't be on an island and with your friends unless they're with you all the time. And then like, so you make it to a point where you're like, man, it'd be nice to have an island, but you know what? I'll settle for like traveling and visiting an island every year. I'll try, I'll, I'll set in with going in on a group and buying an island with a group of people that I have access to. It's like, there's alternatives to it, which is probably what I'll end up doing is getting a group of people to buy this island with me. And I'll be a co-owner, but I'll just make sure that like three weeks out the year, I get to hang, hang out on this island. So that's that, that's my strategy. That's kind of my approach to vision boarding. When I say I've lived my vision board is it's not necessarily, I mean, it is a lot of the other stuff, We, but it's like before we got our first apartment building, I knew I wanted property. And, and so I went through the steps of like, how do I buy property? Before we got our investment properties, I was like, how do I get an investment property. And then how do I start putting things together on my vision board to make sense? I wanted a better relationship with my friends from high school who I'd kind of fallen out of touch with. And I wanted to get into investing in properties. So what I did was I went to my friends in high school and said, hey guys, what if we all chipped in and bought a property together? And what that's done now is that A, we have a chat group that we're in every day talking about our investment property. 
B, we get together to actually work on the property. I'm not physically there as much because I don't live near them anymore, but I'm on the phone with them and I'm checking in. And when I am in town, I do go there and see we're closer now at this age than we've ever been because we have something tied together that we all committed to doing for our kids. So that's the other secret is like, I was able to start piecing together multiple parts of my vision board to say, how do I make these two things support each other? I wanna travel a lot, but I wanna hang with family. So now we're like, all right, we're gonna work 40 weeks out the year. We're gonna travel 12 weeks out the year. That's our 52 week breakdown. In our 12 weeks of travel, we're gonna do one week with this group in the family, one week with this group of friends, We'll do one week with the 24 seven artist writing camps. We'll do one week with this. We'll do one week as just a couple. So those 12 weeks get eaten up pretty quickly, but we now know we have to build a life where we can only really work, work 40 weeks out the year. We work for those 40 weeks. It's 7.50 now. We've been working since the crack of dawn this morning. So we don't work eight hours a day. We work 15, 16 hours a day, six days a week. But when we're not working, we, do, we don't work. So we're going to do the 40 hours and, and bust our ass and do what we got to do. Because when those 12 come and we say, all right, we're going with our siblings to the beach house in North Carolina and all the little cousins are hanging out and we just chilling. I don't pull my laptop or phone out and work. That's my commitment. So, but that came from the vision board. That came from how do we do all this? How do we hang with these people and travel and do all this together at the same time? I have to start putting things together. So for you slash, you know, I would say if, if that circle of, circle of, of influence is important to you, which I believe it is, then how cool would it be if maybe on your birthday every year or maybe a certain time every year, you host like a, a, a cookout or a dinner or a restaurant dinner and you invite those people and you give them a few months head as heads up. If you right now told me, hey, big bro, I'm doing this thing. I'm inviting the people that I, you know, I want to stay connected to. We're going to have dinner at this restaurant or my mom's house or wherever. And I want you to come through. If I got at least two months notice, I'm pulling up. Hey, V, I'm going to be in the DMV. Let's 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 make a family trip out of it. And then what you could do is say, and every year I do it, I'm going to have someone come take pictures of us because that's how you it's like the thing on your vision board becomes real. Now you're going to take a real picture and put on your vision board. These are the people that I consider my circle. And now when I look at my vision board, these are the people that I want to speak to daily or weekly or monthly. So that is my vision board approach. That's that's the strategy I have. Again, the, the byproduct is cool. The cars and all that put them on there because it's I have a Range Rover on there. I want a black black on black Range Rover. Well, actually, I want a Tesla, but my wife doesn't like the Tesla. So I'm, I'm going to get the Range Rover. I see you, sister. What's wrong um, with the Teslas? What happened? I don't know. She 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 says they're inconvenient. What? Life is inconvenient. <laughs> And but, I ain't trying to give no money to Elon Musk. I'm sorry. That's just me. What? We giving the money to somebody, y'all. Y'all understand? The money is going to someone. Uh, but but that's my, you know, and, and we probably could have bought that a while ago. But I have it on there because, like, I look forward to the day when, like, we have the matching cars. That's the vanity thing that's on there. But more importantly, when we have the matching cars, where are we going? Because that's what we're working on now. Like, are we driving to North Carolina to visit system more often? Are we driving to... Maryland to visit friends and family? Are we driving to dinners? Like where where are we going with the car? Because if we're not doing that now, it doesn't matter what car you have. So do that first, figure out the life part, and then you can always upgrade the car over time, but upgrade the car so that it's in service of the life. And what I found is because the life is really where enjoyment is, the $1,200 a month payment to lease the brand new range doesn't feel right when I could put that 1200 to work on the life part. And that's where I am in life right now. So, so I'm excited for you guys. Uh, one of the things we're going to do for everybody who joined, as you put your vision board images and words together, uh, Davina is going to share a, an email or a link for you guys to submit it. And we will have our design team create a desktop and a mobile version of your vision board that you can then upload and, and save as your background and screensavers. So, so kind of y'all, man. Sure. Man, we we believe in it, man. I live it. I live it. I I I I married my vision board just to let y'all know. Like, I had a crush on Davina when I was in eighth grade. I don't even think she knew my name. I don't think like she knew. She just knew me as a skinny African kid from <laughs> Liberia. Like that was what she knew. And I'm in my mind like, man, if that girl ever knew who I was, I've made it in life. 
So every day I wake up and I look at him like, yo, I married Davina Thomas. Like, that's crazy. Like, that was my middle school crush. Like, I, what a life, what a world. Like, you know, I've already won a lottery. So the hundred million never has to come because I, I literally live my vision board life. And in my kids, right? Like I look at my kids and relationship we have with them. Your vision board shifts. Five, 10 years ago, it was a lot more equipment and a lot more like stuff. Now my vision board is like, man, like I, I, I hope my kids and I are always close. I hope like the, the love I feel for them never goes away. Like that's more important to me than if I could upgrade all this equipment tomorrow. So it's little things that you, you shift over time. And that's fine. The shift is cool. Because once you believe in the power of the vision board, you know that whatever you put down happens. But you got to see it every day. I, I believe the seeing it every day is the difference. It's, a lot of people will do this now, do the vision board, then it ends up under your bed or ends up somewhere in your room and you look at it every now and then. But when you can see it every day and it's in your face, it, it does something. I, I can't explain it, but something happens somewhere weird where like you, you start seeing the signs.